I got a text today from a girl who lives in an, another state and I've known four generations of her family. And I was really, really moved because I'm pretty close to her grandmother. So I thought I would uh, maybe go through a little of this. She sent me a really deep text about getting free of idolatry and she had watched some videos, read some stories of people in my ministry that have kind of shaken off the man idolatry of bitterness. Every one of her family members that I know for four generations has really struggled with bitterness. And what is bitterness? It's the problem of the soul that defiles most people. So it's not uncommon to anybody. Most people just don't touch their own bitter soul. So she said she was crying and could feel the anointing just hearing what she was hearing and really happy that I'd shared different stuff with her about that, different stories. So um, I'd actually sent her a video about her own grandmother and she didn't know it was about her grandmother and she was just crying. And then I said, yeah, that was your grandma. So she was she was pretty excited. And she was telling me about, you know, marrying a man who lied for years about believing in God. But she says, I wasn't with walking with God either. I was a hypocrite. I was blinded by my own desires and walked right into a demonic work. You know, it's all, it's all just the work of the flesh. So she cried out to the Lord and she's been doing a lot of repenting for doing things her way because she wanted what she wanted when she wanted it. And she was blinded and couldn't see the truth. That's what the problem is. When we're self-deceived, we're not going to be able to see clearly in somebody else's heart that's self-deceived. And, you know, she's been around this mountain a few times already and in other relationships, I think. So she was pretty excited. And then... Um, I, I we were talking about how we're all given our heart's desire and God sends leanness to our soul. Is it God or is it just that, you know, we get, we sow what we reap. We, we reap the leanness of our soul be, by what we sow. You know, all those scriptures about God doing bad stuff are just about us reaping the stuff because we're activating spiritual law by being rebels and controlling and doing wrong stuff we've activated our own snare because god that's what god's made is sowing and reaping so um again she's saying here this sounds like my story because i've been giving her a lot a lot of stuff today because she says she's talking about how ang anger is associated with idolatry and again she cried out to the lord because she's lived in a lot of idolatry and control anger malice hatred when you open up your heart for the the lust of the flesh you know it's all shipwrecked because you're advancing the wrong kingdom right deceiving being deceived so i'm, I'm not going to actually say a lot of the things she said i think she needs to share them at some point herself she might be coming here for a visit but I was talking about when we don't love each other freely, we get stuck in idolatry because it's all about us and us getting what we want from the other person. And then we just get filled with proud wrath. It's angry, ang anger, 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 anger is the fruit of, you know, idolatry. It just never works out as anything else. So, you know, I told her that the Lord wanted us, her to give her a testimony because it heard the depth of her revelation and understanding has actually really blown me away of the bitter root in her family for generations, which I think her her grand her great grandpa and her grandmother really escaped this snare of the devil. Her actual mom though has really struggled with being bitter, and really that is that's the only demise in Hebrews twelve. So. I said, yeah, we're so blind. We don't realize that when we condemn others, it becomes our own trap. And we're not in a flesh and blood battle. So when we're pointing the finger at people, we're really going down the wrong road altogether. 
So I was telling her about other young women who've actually been able to help their mothers get out of the hell of bitterness, the gall of bitterness, because, because they did. And, you know, one of these, one of my friends who did that, Jean said to her, yeah, it's a lot easier to love than it is to be a mad woman, a woman with claws. It starts with a B with fangs, that B word, you know? So I was telling her we have a very short time to loose heaven or hell wherever we go. And, you know, again, her depth of writing back to me is, is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. So, and she's talking about the bitterness of her soul that's ensnared her and bitching about everybody else and everybody else and not owning her own problems. And I said, yeah, women get fangs and claws when they just want to be earthly, sensual, and don't mind playing with demons. <laughs> and I was telling her that, you know, when you're raised in that flattery, frosted, you know, where women are just total flatters because they're not touching the battle in their own soul either, that root of bitterness is still lying deep inside them, and it's still doing a defiling work. And... We were talking about the demise of flattery again. So, again, again uh, let's see. I kind of wanted to do this video for her grandma, too, to really encourage her, you know, that she's got a granddaughter that's fighting to get out of the familiar spirit. So, um I said to her, you know, the devil wouldn't be chasing you so hard if the Lord wasn't trying to help you have a testimony and help you overcome. And she says, wow, I'm crying. I'd love to share my testimony with other women. I can see the hell of idolatry I've lived in. Thank God for that, that he can actually give me a testimony. It's really about surrendering our own will for his, and the Lord's helping me to get this. And uh, I said, yeah. She said, we can wake up every day and decide the, to serve the Lord or not, because we're serving somebody. That song, you got to serve somebody. <laughs> so, um, Let me move on here. I said, maybe the suffering we incur due to others bling, brings us closer to Jesus, and we can fellowship his suffering. Now we can know his pain and how he felt about our sin, because we're suffering it in, at the hand of somebody else. That's how we get to know who Jesus is and how he feels about our selfishness because we embrace the suffering of other selfish people. So trials and tribulations should actually carve the word of God in our heart because suffering really does make us bitter or better. And I said something in here about, you know, being thankful for suffering. Job... <laughs> Job said in all of his suffering, I used to know him in my head, but now I know him in my heart. We should pray for the people that cause us tribulation. And when our heart gets turned to the Lord, the veil will be taken away because we're blessing those that curse us, praying for those that use us, blessing and cursing not. And actually, it's having a right heart that catapults us into God's presence and we can again, grab what we need from earthly, I mean, heavenly wisdom to be who God wants us to be in our time and space now. And I said, you know, um, I was talking to uh, her about how Jean gave up a million and a half dollar contract with Evil Knievel that probably would have turned into 10 million in the end. He gave it all up to serve the Lord and lose his life. And, you know, the woman that was with him that wanted him to be rich and famous, there became a huge breach in the relationship at that point. But uh, let's see here. I don't know if I need to add all that. But 
Oh, I know what this is. I sent her a couple documents about what the spirit of marriage is. Sorry, I kind of got lost in this and couldn't figure out what it was. But her grandma, when she was in California, Jean, actually wrote a long letter about what the spirit of marriage is and what it isn't. And it became a published work. And, you know, so I actually sent that to her because I think it really, again, opened her eyes even more. So it's called Sanctification Unto Holiness. If anybody wants it, I'd be happy to send them, send that to you too. So, um, I was talking to her about hell and destruction is never full. And when we're looking for the praise and honor that comes from man, and what we can get from them, it's never enough. We're never okay. And I told her about a book called Tales of This Kingdom that has a couple great stories and a little girl named Dirty. It's on YouTube if you want to look it up. And um, the other one is called Princess Amanda and the Dragon. And I was talking about how people that live in lust and usury just take each other out. They're relationships that never produce any good fruit, really. So she's getting more and more convicted with all the things I send her to, which is, it's just blowing my mind in a way how responsive she is and her ability to comprehend truth at this point in her life. Cause I knew her when she was a baby, I've known the generational curse of bitterness and idolatry. So she's, she's telling me how extremely thankful she is for the many things I sent her. So um, let's see. I go on to talk about um, our tent ministry and the good that's happened even just in the one or two we've had. So it's been really powerful. How, again, people have been thinking more about the division, schisms, evil imaginations. And uh, I was telling her what a good thing it is to write our own testimony because we've all been sheep that's gone astray and done our own thing our own way and been mad and bitter. So everybody wants their burger their way and then they get bitter when it doesn't. And I said, a lot of the women I know, even those close to me, have really understood the very nature of depression and offense and being bitter associated with not being led by the spirit and shutting up the kingdom of heaven in their own soul in their own battle to put to, to death the deeds of the flesh and yield to the spirit instead so you know the exercise gym of god uh, the exercise gym of god is to not be offended with god and people and we think it's so much easier to live offended and blame people, and it's not. So being read, led by the right spirit is, is it, is where it's at. And there's no sin that's not common to man. The only people God can't help are prideful liars because they don't ever get a testimony. They don't touch their idolatry. And so I give her a scripture in Jude 1, verse 23. Not that I know what that says now out of the mouth, I guess, life and death are out of the mouth, but, and I said, you know, a lot of women don't want to take a look at acting like a child, thinking like a child, speaking like a, a child, and again, it's hard to take the log out of our own eye, to take the twig out, maybe it's a lot harder to keep pretending like you don't have a twig and a log in your eye when you do, and to avoid loving people and taking the the twig out of their eye maybe that's what the real hardship is in life that we have all backwards again we all we see the things the wrong way without God so Satan can only get a foothold through offenses and playing dumb and I talked to her about all the many I've met a lot of women and some of it's been pretty shocking to see how much they'll protect their dumb crown with all their heart, mind, and strength, and toss their own spiritual integrity out the window just to live like Cain. And so the generational curse, because they don't, they don't want to tell the God of all truth the truth. And Jesus, who is the truth and the life and the Holy Ghost, and any good father would want to help their kids overcome, right? But liars cannot be helped. It's pretty much what God says. 
And I said, I can see why God would pick somebody as bad off as me. And so I told her some about a little bit about my past and that I was finally willing to own my own distractions and why it's so important to be humble because we can get lifted out of any horrible pit if we'll just put on humility, own our sin, confess our sin, how we've offended God. Not just man, not just be sorry over our own crappy lives, but be sorry for how we've been used by diabolical spirits to take other people out. And this, in her life, it's a big deal because she's got a brother that committed suicide. So I'm trying to help her understand even the very curse and nature of bitterness. So I told her that about 27 years ago, I decided to let my soul touch things because I didn't want to create generational curses in my family either. So, and, and when we're willing to own our own crimes, you know, Jesus came out of the desert and walked into his ministry and says, repent, believe, because the kingdom of God is at hand. A lot of people don't want to repent. They'll moan and tell the truth about the sorrows of their life, but not because they're sorry to God, because of how they've affected other people. So you don't get anywhere with worldly sorrow either. And... I told her how great it is to have other women that are involved in the right war, the war between the flesh and the spirit, instead of people, because those are good soldiers. They help you get somewhere in your spiritual growth. And we should get smarter and smarter as time goes on and less seduced by dark voices that come in and whisper in our ear and talk us into resisting God instead of demons. So... I was telling her how much of a sucker I was for singing the wrong song. And I said, that's why your grandma both loved and hated me because I wouldn't sing that song with her. But her grandma gets a lot now. This is years before. So um, I'm wondering if there's any more important stuff. Yeah, I said, there's a scripture that says, those that don't have any understanding to their soul are the mother, sister, father, brother to those that commit suicide. And when our moms, you know, my mom didn't really understand her soul. I was suicidal. Her mom didn't understand her soul. She's been suicidal. She had a brother that committed suicide. So it's a very sad story. And I said, even your grandma has been very controlling in her life. People haven't wanted to work with her. And, you know, she's wanted to be a runner too. But you know what? She never has run, and she's been willing over the years to face her fear and control because it's our only heart problem. I said in Jeremiah 17, it talks about rebellion being the sin of witchcraft, cunning, crafty control, and idolatry is self-love. And we get out of the gospel of love yourself with all your heart. We can get out of that when we care about how we treat other people. That's the way out. We pass from death into life when we love and give up caring about how others love us. We actually get free. I said, I could have totally ended up like your mom, just bitter and offended and slandering people all the time because I didn't want to touch my own soul. I was a pity baby to the core. And I, if people felt sorry for me, maybe I wouldn't have to be responsible. But it made me really sick in my soul and my flesh too, just like her mother. So it's awesome to have been forgiven much because then we have the potential to love much. That's what's really cool about owning your sin. It also gives you the potential to love much. Love much. So I told her I thought I was going to die one time when a man in, way in my past, not Gene Sullivan, was, uh, was unfaithful to me. And I got so bitter, I cried out to God. I thought it was going to die of bitterness, but the Lord showed me, hmm, this is how I felt about your unfaithfulness, just how you feel now. And it really turned my mourning into joy. So that's what happens when you get start mourning over other people's sins. You can actually get a cup of joy if you'll look in the mirror again. So I don't know how much longer this is, and I'm super tired, but I wanted to make a little document. I'm going to just read this too, but... I, I said, I have friends with so many stories. Some are about abortion or indifference that led to somebody's death. I said, you'll feel at home with women who won't look down on you, but can feel bonded with you in forgiveness. 
And I wish your own mother had known the power of love instead of doing the bitch thing. She would have been valued and loved. And she talks about Jean, you know, having razor eyes that can see right through her motive and intentions. <laughs> how difficult that was bit had just been for her in the past so I said you know we're all in the same club we've all kind of felt that way about him but um it's because he actually is a seer that's why we need prophets prophets are people that see and if you receive a prophet you'll see too that's what the bible says so I said Jesus gave us love power and a sign sound mind and it's theirs for those to find who will seek it I've had a lot of women now who I thank God for. I was, I was willing, I was willing to tell them the whole bloody story, life of my past, and it gave me the ability to love them and put up with their problems, so I could actually help them, and help them grow up and stop being screaming, demanding babies. So no glory to me. I was just the recipient of a lot of forgiveness myself, so I could be merciful, unlike unlike most of their mothers. And I told her, the Lord's calling you to be an older woman, too. I think I'm going to make part two of this tomorrow because I'm getting really tired and this is long. I wanted to document it, though, for her and maybe other relatives of hers. So I'm going to sign off for now and make it part two tomorrow night.